I'm Jason England, and I'd like to take a moment to walk you through some of my favorite card magic books of the 20th century. These are some of the books that uh, I came up with, uh, the books that I studied uh, at a very early magic age. I was probably 18 or 19, but these were the very first books that I bought and studied, um, with just one exception. I'll cover that in just a second. So if you were going to try to learn something about uh, card magic, this is where I would start. Uh, it's not a perfect chronological order of how I think you should move through card magic, but uh, there's a nice uh, beginning, middle, and end. And so here we go. The first place I would start these days um, is probably still with the Royal Road to Card Magic. I'm a big fan of modern books like Card College, but if I had to start somewhere, I think I would still start with Royal Road. Written by uh, Hugh Garden Browie, and uh, it's an excellent book for the beginner. I highly recommend it. So Royal Road to Card Magic, which by the way is available as a Dover paperback, pretty inexpensive, and uh, it's just a terrific place to start. Here's another Dover paperback that uh, I think is a nice place for people to start, um, and that's the Encyclopedia of Card Tricks. Now this isn't uh, all self-working, you know, not very slight intensive magic like the Royal Road stuff, um, but uh, it does have a lot of beginning card tricks in it, uh, some of them mathematically based, a few of them you've use uh, gaffed cards. A couple of them uh, even use uh, some mnemonic systems. Uh, for instance, the uh, Cy Stebbins and the Nicola system are both in this book. So uh, Encyclopedia Card Tricks edited by Gene Hugard is another excellent place to start. And it is available as a Dover paperback. So again, not a lot of money uh, invested in that book, but you get a lot of return. Uh, here's another terrific book that I turn to quite frequently. It's called Scarney on Card Tricks by John Scarney. Uh, these aren't necessarily his tricks, although there are a few in here that are his. Most of these are just good tricks that he collected into this volume from other performers. Scarney on Card Tricks um, is pretty much, um, well, again, it's not a slight intensive uh, book. You know, most of these things are what we would call today, to uh, borrow a term from Steve Beam, semi-automatic. They don't use heavy sleight of hand, uh, they may just use a simple setup. Or, uh, or a minor move, you know, maybe a double lift would be the most difficult slight you would find in here. An excellent, excellent book and also available as a Dover reprint. Now we get into the uh, books where there actually is some sleight of hand involved, some technique where you'll have to practice uh, some pretty heavy duty slights. The first one is Expert Card Technique, again by Hugh Gard and Browie. Uh, this is an absolutely terrific book. It has a lot of material by Charlie Miller and Guy Vernon and just a ton of other people. Um, published in the uh, 1940s, uh, but it's still uh, as fresh today as it was 70 years ago. This happens to be the third edition, which has uh, an extra chapter at the back uh, with some Vernon and Daly material in it, Dr. Jacob Daly, that is. But uh, you can get the second edition as a Dover reprint for just a few dollars. Another slight intensive book, uh, a book full of moves really, is uh, Arthur Buckley's Card Control. First published privately in 1946, uh, this is a terrific book and it's just got a ton of great moves in it. Anytime I want a little inspiration, I turn to Buckley, I throw open the book to any random page and I just start reading. I always find something I haven't seen for a while and uh, you know, it sort of gets the creative juices flowing. So Arthur Buckley's Card Control, a really great book, available as a Dover reprint. Uh, this next book is one of Darwin Ortiz's favorite books. Uh, Darwin's a good friend of mine and I've always respected uh, his thoughts on card magic. If he likes the card magic of Paul LePaul, it's got to be a good book. And indeed, it is a great book. Uh, the Card Magic of Paul LePaul is not a Dover reprint. Uh, this happens to be a D. Robbins reprint, uh, but it's an excellent book. There's a lot of great moves in here. There's even some stuff in here that you might consider, uh, you know, sort of the beginnings of flourishing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fans and there's a lot of uh, different types of uh, different types of moves that you wouldn't necessarily put into a, uh, a magic trick necessarily, but that uh, are some really beautiful moves with the deck of cards. So The Card Magic of Paula Paul is an excellent book. I highly recommend it. One of the very earliest books that I ever got uh, is an acknowledged classic. It's Harry Lorraine's Close-Up Card Magic. Uh, this book is uh, excellent in my opinion, and it's probably the first place that I ever learned the Pharaoh Shuffle as well as the overhand jog shuffles, uh, two terrific techniques that I use all the time. Uh, Harry's written a lot of great books, but this is sort of the one that started it all for him. Close-Up Card Magic by Harry Lorraine. Uh, what book list would be complete without Stars of Magic? 
Uh, it is not all cards. There's also coin tricks and the cups and balls and things of that nature in here. But uh, Stars of Magic has what is probably my favorite card trick of all time in it. It's called Triumph. Uh, it's the effect by Di Vernon, and this is the first place it was published. This, of course, was originally a serial. It was a magazine-type uh, format that was mailed out uh, in the 1940s, and uh, it's been all found under one cover these days. Stars of Magic is a terrific book. I highly encourage you to take a look at it. Two other great books that came out, uh, well, maybe 20 years or so, a little bit longer than that, uh, from uh, Stars of Magic, maybe 30 years after Stars of Magic, but are just as good are The Complete Walton. Uh, the Complete Walton uh, comes in two volumes, volumes one and two, and uh, this is the magic of Roy Walton of Scotland. Um, I can't say enough about The Complete Walton. Uh, these books are absolutely phenomenal, and the magic in these covers is uh, simply sensational. If you don't have The Complete Walton, do yourself a favor, track down these volumes and get them. They're excellent. Enough said. Let's move over to Di Vernon for a little bit. Uh, one of his favorite, uh, or one of uh, my favorite books of Di Vernon's were his uh, Inner Card Secret trilogy. Uh, they were originally published like this uh, in paperback format. You had Inner Secrets, More Inner Secrets, and Further Inner Secrets. You can still find them as the individual volumes, but L&L Publishing has also published them as a single volume. Here we have the Inner Card trilogy, all three of those books in one volume. Excellent series of books, a lot of classics in here like uh, Oil and Water, Twisting the Aces is in this book, uh, a couple of other different things in here that you may have heard about, The Cards Across and Three Card Money and The Trick That Cannot Be Explained are all in the Inner Card Secrets trilogy. So a terrific book and I highly recommend it. If you're going to get the Inner Card Secrets trilogy, you may as well also get what a lot of people consider just to be the fourth volume and that's Di Vernon's Ultimate, Car uh, Ultimate Secrets of Card Magic. It's a great book, follows the same format as the uh, Inner Card Secrets trilogy. It's also got tricks in here by people other than Vernon, some of his friends. Uh, there's some Jennings material in here, and Roger Klaus has got stuff in here, and a lot of other great magicians. It's a terrific book, and I like it a lot. Let's move on to uh, Ed Marlowe. Uh, Marlowe's probably published more on card magic than anyone else in history, but if you had to get just one book, it would be the new bound edition of his Revolutionary Card Technique book. Uh, Revolutionary Card Technique was originally published uh, as a series of, well, pamphlets, I guess you would call them. But these days, they're all available under one cover. Uh, this was published by Magic Inc. a few years ago, and it's excellent. Bill Malone recommends this book, as do I. It's a really, really great book, full of material that'll keep you busy for many, many years. Uh, here's a book that a lot of people have overlooked, but all the pros know about, and they all rave about it. I hope none of them are upset that I mention it. It's called The Fine Art of Magic by Kaplan. This is uh, not just a card magic book. There is some stuff in here other than card magic. You've got, you know, you've got uh, rope tricks, and you've got uh, mind reading tricks, and coin tricks, and handkerchief tricks, and things of that nature. But the card magic stuff is absolutely superb. I highly recommend that you... Uh, take the time and effort to track this down because it's not available as a reprint. You're going to have to find a first edition and they can be pretty pricey if it's got a dust jacket like this on it. Uh, you know, sometimes in the neighborhood of $100 or more, but it's worth every penny if you like great magic. Uh, so there's another vote for George Kaplan's The Fine Art of Magic. Last but not least, we'll talk about a book that I don't necessarily recommend to beginners, but anyone that's trying to move past the uh, beginner stage in card magic absolutely has to read this. And of course, I'm talking about my favorite book, The Expert at the Card Table by S.W. Erdnitz. At least that's the name that the guy used when he published the book. Originally published in 1902, uh, this is the facsimile first edition that came out a few years ago. Uh, but the truth is, any edition will do because uh, all you should be after as a beginner is just the information. Um, Bill Kalush has several great editions for sale on his Conjuring Arts uh, Research Library website. And, uh, you know, there's other places that you can get the expert at the card table. I don't consider it a book for a raw beginner, but it's absolutely a book you have to read if you ever hope to progress beyond that stage. So uh, one more vote for the expert at the card table, like we needed another vote for that book. It's probably the best book I've ever read on overall card handling technique especially when you consider the period that it was written in. I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into what some of my favorite magic books, card magic books anyway, uh, of the 20th century are. And I hope you learned a little something there, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.